Good morning. Regardless of what time it is, it is time to praise God. Amen? This morning, Ron is, as always, taping for DVDs and for YouTube. We hope the folks watching on YouTube will like and share the video and hopefully comment on something. Let us know you're watching what you think. Bev, you going to say hi to them? Good morning, everybody. This is my Hollywood wave. <laughs> Hope you're all doing good. God bless you and love, love you all. We know that it takes several Methodists to change a light bulb, and Bev is one of them. <laughs> Would you join me in prayer as we t prepare to worship on this Trinity Sunday? Spirit of wisdom and hope, we witness your glory in the heavens and hear your call to us. We are sometimes overwhelmed by the thought of your compassionate care. Open our hearts this day to hear and respond in joy to your call that we may serve you faithfully all of our days. Amen. This morning, Henry brings in the light of Christ, and we not only have the uh, two main candles for Christ's divinity and humanity, but we still have some left over from, the, from our Pentecost celebration. Henry, don't light the uh, battery-operated ones. <laughs> now, Ron only does that. <laughs> Ron has a patent on that. You can't do that. But he did make the candles look very realistic. Gave them all a little black tip on all those fake candles, so that's all right. This morning, would you, as you are able, yes, stand and join me in our call to worship. The name of the Lord is majestic. When we look at the heavens, we rejoice in God. The moon, stars, planets, solar systems are the delight to us. Come, let us shout our praise to God. Lord, thank you for this awesome creation. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Praise be that it doesn't get as hot as, as Arizona as it does here. We're doing the gospel reading. It's called, it's been in chapter John, verse, chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whenever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. We do the unison prayer out together in the, in the bulletin. God of creation, Jesus Redeemer, Holy Spirit who guides and sustains us, hear our prayers this day. We know the many ways in which we have failed to do the task which you have set before us. We have chosen our comfort, our services to you. Our fears and doubts lay claim to our lives and we shrink from the opportunities you give to us. Forgive us for the many failings. Lift and restore us to your grace. Put our feet on the pathways of service. Offer justice and peace to all people. Heal us, O gracious one, for we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The New Testament reason is Romans 4, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. 
It's in the Pew Bible on page 155 if you want to follow along. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through which we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of our sharing the glory of God. And not only that we, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that sufferings produce endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has, has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely have been reconciled will we be saved by his life. By more than that, we even boast in God, in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through which we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. It is Trinity Sunday. So, last week we celebrated Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit, one part of God. Here's your quiz. What's the other two parts? The Father and Son, yes. So we have the Creator, and we know that when we look out even this window, anywhere that we go, we see creation, and it speaks to us of God. The, how intricate it is, how systems work together, how beautiful it is. Every once in a while, Rosemary and Don are out on one of their rides, and they take pictures or you in your yard, those I especially like, or the sunsets. You get some nice sunsets. Those remind us of how great creation is and how great our God is. And then we have Jesus. We spend a lot of time here with the Gospels, talking about what Jesus taught us while he lived here and how he was crucified, died, and yet rose again. The first person to do that. The second Adam, the one who forgives us of our sins. And then we have last week the Holy Spirit, the one who God promised would live within us, the one who tells us what is right and wrong and helps us to interpret the Bible as we read. Those three together make God. One plus one plus one equals one. We have one God. Somehow we don't understand how that works. And don't worry, I'm not trying to explain it today. Because theologians have worked on that for hundreds of years and still don't have a good solution. But we believe there is one God, one mind in those three ways that we know God. And so it's important for us to not only look at nature and to think about and read about Jesus' teachings, but also to listen to the Holy Spirit within us who teaches us right and wrong and who is with us always. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our beautiful creation that you have made for us to enjoy. We thank you for the life and example of Jesus Christ and for his paying for our sins. And we thank you also for the Holy Spirit who lives within us and helps us to interpret your word into our lives. We say thank you again, God. Amen.
I'm going to start by telling you a story this morning, a real life experience for me. How many of you ever took the Red Cross babysitting class? <laughs> well, we're not going into that, Shelley. I took that when I was 13 or 14, somewhere around that area. And some of you know Bob and Lois Fulmer. I babysit their kids. And Paul and Sheila Meese, you might recognize that name, Bev. <laughs> Seeing as Paul's her brother, she should, right? Um, I babysat Eric and uh, Lindsay, when, not Lindsay, in Kennedy. Ken Tara, quiz for memory here. And then we get you off on the wrong track. Tara was very little. She was no problem. Eric, however, was a little bit older, and it was the very first time that Paul and Sheila had left him with anyone else. He was not a happy camper to be without mom. He was fine while we had dinner. He was fine playing through the evening, put him to bed, and his whole being just kind of turned inside out and spit all over the bed. So as a, a young kid, I felt pretty good. I had gotten new sheets, new jammies, got him all cleaned up, tucked him back in, and he did it again. <laughs> now I knew, didn't know where there was any more. I had used the resources I had. And for me personally, when I throw up once, I'm done. I did not know that children had the resources to do this multiple times. <laughs> so I said, Eric, why don't you just come out? We'll watch TV. You can sit on the couch with me. Mistake. <laughs> it happened again. <laughs> now we're all over the couch cushions. And I gave up. Sheila had been really good, knowing this was the first time she was afraid it might not go well. I had a contact number for where they were. I think it was one of Paul's banquets for work, and they were excited to go out as a couple for a change, you know, no kids. And they had also left me Lois's phone number as an emergency backup local. So I called Lois and I explained what had happened. I said, I don't know what else to do at this point or how many more times this kid is going to do this. You know, that was my concern. Someone at Mitchellsville said I should have put him in the tub and just left him there. <laughs> Fortunately, Lois came over. She got the covers off the sofa, got them to soak. She called Sheila, and so Sheila and Paul were headed home. And eventually, all worked well, but I don't think they ever called me to babysit again. I'm not sure. <laughs> Actually, they did, but um, yeah, some of you have heard Sheila's name. We had prayed for her for quite a while. It's been a couple years since she passed, and Paul was up recently. How long ago? When was he up last? Two months ago. So anyway, still around. Bev still acknowledges that he's her brother, and I guess he acknowledges her. I haven't talked to him yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my story of first experiences of babysitting. I think then I could have taught the Red Cross class and there would have been no more babysitters. I would have scared them all off at that point. The reason I share that with you, though, is our scripture reading today from the gospel is Jesus' final discourse. He's trying to tell the disciples all the things that they're going to need to take care of creation as he goes back to heaven. And it's like Sheila left that nice long list of, and made sure she told me, now Eric likes to sleep with this blanket, Tara likes this pacifier. You know, all of those little things that make the kids more comfortable makes the job of the caretaker a little bit easier. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell the folks then. Here are the things you need to know, but I can tell you're getting overwhelmed. So I'm going to send the advocate, the Holy Spirit, so that you will bring these things to mind later. And it's a good thing he did. I picture like our course of study when we were going to Buffalo, it was an intensive Friday and then most of the day on Saturday until mid-afternoon there reached a point about 10 or 11 on Saturday morning 
where most of us had absorbed all that we were going to and everything was just washing over us as we waited for the clock to move. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> um, and the clock would not move fast enough. You hoped the professors offered some good notes to take home on that last, or if they were smart, they had activities that we could do to keep us alert at that point. But I picture the disciples being kind of glazed over, just not able to accept all of this. And Jesus actually said to them, there's so much more I need to tell you. But we picture what Jesus is doing is turning over his creation, including the humans among us. I hope you're all human, as far as I can tell anyway. It, Jesus is leaving us in the care of these 11 people who don't always seem to get it. They kind of bumble through a lot of what Jesus asked them to do. And it wasn't until as we celebrated last week with Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came to them, they were able to recall all of the things that Jesus taught them. And as I mentioned with the kids, to help us interpret the Bible into how we live our lives. Those are very important parts of what we know as the Trinity. We got to see the person of Jesus Christ we didn't get to see God the Father. We don't specifically get to see the Holy Spirit. And yet, like so many other things that we take for granted, we understand they're there because we see their evidence. I can't see gravity, but I guarantee if I step off this step, I will feel gravity. I can't see the wind, but I can see its effects. When you see the trees move and the limbs fall, had one in my backyard, the parsonage has no trees, just so you know, but I have a big limb in my backyard. We see the effects of those things, therefore we believe in them. We see creation and we know there has to have been a creator. There are those people who will deny that, and I still don't understand how they can have enough faith to think that all this stuff happened by accident. I keep saying, I don't think I have that much faith. I could not believe that that just poof happened somehow. So I believe that there was a creator. When I read the words of Jesus Christ and put them together with the Old Testament and our need for a Savior, I understand that Jesus must have lived. The various archaeology and other sciences are gradually proving what the Bible says, and yet I don't care if they don't because my faith says Jesus lived the personification of God in this human wrapping. I also don't know about the Spirit. Some people's manifestation of the Spirit scares me a little bit. And yet I know that it is that Holy Spirit that lives in us that helps us interpret to apply Jesus' teachings and our other beliefs, helps us apply that to our lives. We believe that the advocate works on our behalf. Jesus was much like a worried parent, I believe, as he was talking to these folks and saying, I'm about to go away. You're not going to see me for a while, but I will send the advocate, the counselor, the Holy Spirit to be with you. Now, it, it suggests to us in the scripture that the Holy Spirit will reveal things to us. Does that mean we can win the lottery tomorrow? No, sorry, I don't think that's how it works. Besides, if you're a good Methodist, you don't buy lottery tickets. Sorry. No, we'll, we'll just hang you later. It's okay. Right after you finish counting the money. 
you have to count money first, yes. The, the church does, does not believe in gambling, and they consider lottery part of that. However, at Mitchellsville, we also had a raffle going on for um, someone's uh, relief fund, so to speak. So, yeah. If you're not gambling to the point of endangering your family's welfare, we have a little, little difference there. But just to let you know what the church teaches, save your money, don't give it to the state by will. They take enough by force. That's kind of the... <laughs> It's kind of the way I look at it. No, unfortunately, this isn't a promise of prophetic powers some way. This is uh, the truth that's shared is the truth about a kingdom of God. And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. We're talking about a kingdom beyond what we see. It's far more important than our lottery numbers or knowing who to bet on for the next Super Bowl. And while it may not give us advance warning of some of the things coming up in our individual or corporate lives, it can give us tools for climbing out of whatever hole we find ourselves in. I don't know about you, but the future plan that I had for my life back shortly after I babysat Eric <laughs> is not quite the way life went. Um, it took several detours over time, and I suspect most of your lives are the same. Someone said this is more about wisdom, and when they set up the lectionary, they actually pair this with some of the Proverbs, and if you have read through the Proverbs, you will recognize the reference to lady wisdom. Someone commented that wisdom is knowledge applied. It's taking what we know and using it in our lives. I think that's what we're called to do with the scriptures. This is an important part of the entity of God. And these verses, uh, various commenters and scholars debate the scope of this all. But much like our discussions of the nature of the Holy Spirit, I would say that the wisdom of Proverbs is indeed a reference to the Holy Spirit, at least according to John's gospel. So it's put together here with our gospel reading today, and even if we see that wisdom here is as what has come to be called common sense or learned knowledge to be applied, the passage suggests there is help available. It's the Holy Spirit who takes the knowledge we have and helps us to apply it to the situations we find ourselves in. The text says that wisdom offers a way to life, the life that God intends for all of us, a life of community and of connection on one level. As this is Trinity Sunday, it's a time to celebrate the mystery that is the nature of God. God who is one and yet is experienced and approached in three aspects. These aspects have been given many names to correlate to human experience in even though God is not human. Some correlate to functions, though God is never fully described in any one of these. Some correlate to relationship, to each of the other aspects and to who we worship and approach this ultimate essence. Both the Gospels and the wisdom text from Proverbs describe a God who seeks us, who connects with us, who guides us, calls us, and shapes us. Jesus revealed that God when he offered his disciples continuing contact even once he was no longer present. Wisdom cries out with the presence of God if we would but have ears to hear. God desires contact with us. It's as if when you open your cell phone and you scroll through your contacts, there's God. But he's even more reliable than any of your other contacts because God always answers. I don't. Oh, that was just a comment in general. I don't answer certain people's calls. I don't answer calls from numbers I don't recognize. So leave a message if I don't answer right away. 
especially if I am at camp. I use the excuse that the cell phone does not always work there. I'm not sure whether it does or not, but I don't always answer. That I do know. Depends on where I am and what I'm in the middle of. I did start reading for my courses this week, though, while I was at camp. So next month, I have two classes, have to have all that work done before them. So I'm trying to get there. Wisdom cries out with the presence of God. But if we have ears to hear, do we really listen? God desires that contact. He reaches out, and as the hymn says, In the rustling grass I hear him pass. God speaks to me everywhere. We sing that. We believe that. We are sustained by that, by wisdom's cry. It's almost as if you could picture this as a relay race. God runs the first relay. He's speaking, teaching, and guiding his people from heaven. And then Jesus takes the baton and runs the next course. Coming to earth in the form of a man, he taught and guided his followers while in their midst. And now Jesus hands that baton off for the final leg to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit was to come and continue to teach and guide the believers as he lives within them. I'd like us to take our hymnal this morning and turn to page 881, where we'll find a creed that shows some of the ancient church beliefs and hopefully our beliefs as well in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's on page 881. In the tradition of the creeds, I would ask that you stand as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing. We'll get to him in just a second as we pray together. O oh God, we do ask that you will make us aware of your presence in your creation, in the teachings of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, and in the presence of the Holy Spirit in our own lives, living and breathing within us, giving us the breath of life and sustaining us as we go through this life in this earth. Lord, we ask for your blessing and that you will open our ears and our eyes that we may see you active with each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh God, we give you thanks as we support not only the budget of this church for your ministry here in Avoca, but this basket for missions here and around the world, and finally for the Wells Project through Heifer. We just ask your blessings on what we have brought to you, knowing that everything we have is in trust for you. Amen. Sustainer, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, would you receive our benediction? May the gift of our Creator, of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit present within us go with you today. May you be aware of the gift that you have been given of life and life eternal as you go out into this world and spread hope, peace, and joy. Amen.